With the recent announcement that ChatGPT is rolling out a premium feature at $42 a month, I thought it might be fun to ask ChatGPT if it knows how to create an alternative to itself using Ruby on Rails. Of course, it responded by saying, let's use the Faraday gem, let's create a connection, let's do the prompt handling, make the response or make the request, get the response, and then put that response out to the screen. Using the same template, we can actually access the open AI and request various different text models. We can uh, toggle between them and it's all pretty simple. So today we're gonna be taking a look at how to create an AI like this. We're gonna do this by having an, uh, a window that looks like this where we can put in a uh, request. We can choose the model, click send, and then it will reply with that response. So let's take a look at how to create this. To get started, we're gonna do a Rails new video, dash J for ES build, dash C for bootstrap. Now that's done, we can CD into that application and do a couple things. The first one is we're gonna to have to do a Rails G controller for a pages controller with a home action. After we do that, we can then do a bundle add for the Faraday gem. That'll add that to our gem file. Because we're using Ruby 3.2, however, Ruby-V, we can see we're using 3.2 in my case. I have to add an extra gem to the gem file specifically. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up in VS Code to add that gem in real fast before I forget. Now, this is probably not gonna be an issue in the future, but all you have to do is come into your gem file, scroll down to the bottom, do a gem for the Foreman gem, comma, GitHub, and then we'll use another AI, which is GitHub Copilot, to auto-complete this contextually. At this point, you can run another bundle command in your terminal to install that gem, and you should be good to run your bin slash dev command. Now, what we're gonna do is do a Rails G job. We're gonna call this job uh, the AI request, oops, AI request job, and then we can go ahead and run that. That'll generate a job for us in app slash jobs. After that's done, we can then do a bin slash dev to start our server and come over to localhost port 3000, just like that. Now let's come over to our side panel. I'll hit F11, come into config and routes.rb. Inside of the routes, we wanna do two things. The first is change the pages to be the root, and then we wanna create a post request to an action that we'll create in pages called AI underscore request. Once that's done, we can close the gem file and we can close the routes because we're done in there. Now we wanna come up to our app, our views, and inside of our views, we wanna create a folder. This is gonna be for our AI stuff. We're gonna have two partials that we're gonna be using here. So we're gonna say AI is our folder. We're gonna right click new file. The first one will be underscore uh, output.html.erb. And the second one will right click and this one will be underscore request underscore form.html.erb. Inside of the home page here in pages home, we can do our logic that we need to. We're gonna start by coming up to the top here and just putting in a div with a class of container and mt slash or mt dash five. Then we can put whatever we'd like to for the header and the, the tagline. Then we want to render a partial, which will be our request form that we just created with some locals that will be a UUID. To generate that, we come up to our app controllers, pages controller. Inside of the pages controller at the top here, we want to require secure random. And then inside of the home, we want to generate a UUID from secure random dot UUID. This gives us a unique random ID that we can put onto the page that we can use to stream from and stream to. This allows us to create a turbo stream that only works for whoever's on this page unless someone else generates the same UUID, which is kind of uh, not likely. So that allows us to do our turbo stream for a channel underscore and then the UUID. We can then come down here below it and do two key things. The first one is create a div with an ID of AI underscore output. It's important that this is AI underscore output, or at least that it is the same in here as it is where we do our turbo stream two. That way we can update or replace whatever's inside of this. Inside of this div, we then render the partial, which is our AI output that we created earlier, and we pass in a local of generated idea, which is just an empty string. After we're done with this, we can come over to our output. We can put in a div with a class of card. We can check if we have a generated idea, and if we do, we can output it to the page. We can then come over to our request form, and inside of our request form, we can create a form for a request to AI request. We then have a URL of AI request path with a method of post and a remote of true. 
for this, we can pass in our UUID so that in the back end we know where we're streaming to because we already know where we're streaming from, but we have to tell the back end where to put the data. We can then create a form group for a text area for a prompt. We can then create a uh, submit button at the bottom here below all of this. So below the form group, we create a submit button, which allows us to post this. The last thing we want to do is create a drop down that allows us to select between the different models that are available to us. And for that, we can create a f.select for the AI model with an options for select. For these uh, different model types here, we can come over to the uh, pricing page for OpenAI, and we can see that they have four fine tuned models here where the usage is uh, between 0.16 uh, of a cent all the way up to it looks like 12 cents per 1000 tokens. A token, as far as I know, is a word, so this is per 1000 words. So this one's going to be 12 cents per thousand words. This one's going to be like a fraction of a cent per thousand words. It's also going to be not great at answering stuff. So as you go up in pricing, your answer quality will greatly improve. That said, it's fun to play around with. So we'll create this drop down. We'll set the default option to be DaVinci, which is the uh, most sophisticated version. We then pass in an empty brace because we don't want to style the actual options in the drop down, but we do want to give the uh, drop down as a whole a class. If we save this and come over to our Rails application and refresh it, we should now see that we have the form here with the drop down that's neatly styled all the way across the screen, and then we can choose between the various options. When we click send, though, nothing will happen, but eventually it'll replace whatever's down here with what the AI had to say. The next step is going to be to stop our server and clear our console. We now need to come over to the OpenAI uh, account slash API keys, which we can see right here. If you just go over to OpenAI slash account, it should take you to like the usage page. And then from the usage page, you can come down to API keys and then you can click create a new secret key. Make sure you don't share this with anyone like I'm doing right now. Copy that, click OK. And then you can do either a editor equals, and let me full screen this, editor equals uh, nano or rails uh, credentials, credentials colon edit. That'll take you into a nano editor. You can also do it for Vim, or if you only have access to like VS code, you can switch this to just be some quotes where you have editor equals code space dot space dash dash wait, and then enter it like that. And then if you click in your VS code window, it should open up that same thing. You can then come down here to an open AI colon, hit enter, tab over, do an API key, and then paste in your API or your AI API key. If you save this, nothing will happen yet. But if we uh, hit uh, close on this, we'll hopefully see that it says that the credentials were uh, encrypted and saved. So at this point, we have our a uh, API key in our application. We can now come over to our pages controller and we can finish up because we're almost done already. The first thing we want to do is at the top here, we want to get the API key if we're on the AI request action, which we still have to create. So for the AI request action, we'll do it right here. We then want to have a private section down here where we do this set API key. And the way we do that is just by creating a method called set API key, where the at API key is equal to rails.application.credentials.openAI, which is why we called it that, and then the API key. That allows us to have access to it. Now we want to sanitize our parameters. So we say AI request params is the params.require AI request, which in our form right here is this value right here. We then tell it to permit the prompt, which in our request is the text area input prompt. We tell it to permit the AI model, which in our request is this AI model select right here, which has our Ada, Babbage, Curry, or DaVinci as the values, which is how we're accessing the URL. And then we tell it to permit the UUID, which we create in our home action that we pass into the home page that gets passed into the form that in the form is passed in as a hidden input value, which comes back to our pages controller that we access right here. So we can pass it in to our AI request job that we created. Our AI request job has a perform later, which allows it to run in the background so that this isn't a blocking action. So when you make the request, the page doesn't stay stuck at loading for the user for 10 seconds. So we run this in the background and do some stuff afterwards. We pass in our AI request parameters that has all of our information as well as our API key. We can now come over to our app and our jobs directory and our AI request job. Inside of our AI request job, we can finish up because this is actually the last section. 
For our perform action, we can replace the parameters with an AI request parameter and an API key parameter. And then we can come down to the bottom here. So what we can do is we can assume we've made our request. And then under the assumption that we've made our request, we can grab our UUID. We can then grab a generated idea, which is just going to for now be our prompt that we passed in. And then we can try to test updating the page before we do our API request. That way we're not uh, using through our like usage quotas. So we tell it to do a turbo streams channel dot broadcast replace to the channel underscore UUID. We'll talk about why this is a bad idea in a second. After that, we tell it that it has a target. The target is going to be the AI output, which if we check inside of our home.html, the AI output wraps around the AI output partial. After we do that, we can then tell it which partial to replace this AI output with, which is this responses output. And hopefully now you can see the issue. We're telling it to replace the contents of this with this, which is going to effectively give us this, which means we no longer have a target. So this will only work once. We'll talk about how to fix that in a second. I just wanna make sure that this is clear why this doesn't work. And then we pass in our locals, which is going to be our generated idea, which for now is just that local that we passed in there. If we come out of here, come over to our application, do a bin slash dev to start our server, and then refresh the page, we can come in here and say test case, choose any of these, it doesn't matter, click send, and we'll see in here that we're running into an error. Now the error here is because I forgot to change this from responses to the uh, output that we have right here because I changed this between videos. So let's make sure this partial is going to the AI slash output and then let's refresh the page again. Now let's do test case, choose the ADA and click send. And now we see test case appears here. But if I open up this console in full screen real quick and we come down here, we can actually see that we now have a card right here. So if we now change this to one, two, three, four and we click send, it won't update one, two, three, four because it doesn't have that AI output anymore. So to get that div to stick around, we can move this over. We can come over to our turbo streams and change this from a replace to, to be an update to. So now it'll just update the contents of that div and not replace the entire div. So now if we come over here and we refresh the page, we can type test case, click on add a, click send, we get a test case. And now let's do one, two, three, four with DaVinci, we get one, two, three, four. Because now if we open this up in our console and we scroll down, and we expand this, we can hopefully see that we have our AI output div that we can still target and we're just replacing or we're updating the contents of it, which is that partial. So we're updating the partial, we're not replacing the whole thing with the partial. So it's a bit nuanced, but that is important. So now we know that this works regardless of what we type here, it does the turbo stream part. So now let's handle the actual, AI, uh, the actual request to open AI. To do that, we can get rid of the generated idea, which is equal to the AI request prompt. We have our UUID, we can keep that part, and we can come up here. The first thing we wanna do is just basically mimic what ChatGPT told us to do. What it told us to do was to create a Faraday connection to the api.openai.com. After that, it told us to create a response block, which we're gonna do right here, where the response is equal to the connection.post. And if you wanna make this clearer, you can just say this is connection and replace this with a connection. Then in our request.url, we just grab, because this is our existing URL, we then append to this slash AI or slash V1 slash engine slash, and then the AI model, which if we pass back the ADA from our request form right here, this gets converted into under or to lowercase ADA, which means this right here is just going to become ADA slash completions or you know Da Vinci slash completions, whatever. So that's how we're passing it back and toggling between them. We then give it a content type of application slash JSON, which is self-explanatory. We're passing back JSON. We give it an authorization, which is a bearer space, and then our API key, which we get through this argument right here. But remember, because we ran this without using the API key, the formatter sometimes adds a underscore. So make sure this is still API key clearly defined. You can check by double clicking it in some editors, it'll highlight other occurrences and you can see here it matches. Then after we do that, we create the request body where we pass in the prompt, which is our AI params prompt. We pass it a mass, max tokens, which is the maximum number of words that the uh, AI is allowed to reply with. 
which stops us from getting billed a whole bunch. We then tell it the temperature, which I forget what this does, and the number of uh, responses allowed. So we don't allow it to respond with a thousand different responses, which would give us like 250 tokens times a thousand, which equals you a bankrupt account. We don't want that. And then we just tell this to be a dot to JSON. After we do that, we can come below our uh, do block and we can do a JSON response equals a JSON.parse, the response body that we get back from OpenAI. We then tell it the generated idea is to go into the JSON response, grab the choices, grab the zeroth element, and then grab the text out of the zeroth element, store it in the generated idea. At this point, what we can do is we can come down here and we can tell it to do a TurboStream broadcast to the UUID, but instead of just passing in the uh, old parameter that we had before, we now have a response from the AI that we're passing in. So this works, it plugs just in, like the other one does, just plugs right in. And now if we come out of here and we refresh the page, we can hit enter a bunch, scroll down, and we can say, explain Ruby on Rails 7 to me like I'm a five year old and we can click send. We can see down here that it creates a job for us where it's in queued and this will take roughly like 10 ish seconds. We can see here once we get the response back, I'm going to be working on a project with the team of developers who have all been working on Ruby and Rails for a while. And what this is actually doing is it's using the completions engine here. So when you go to the uh, different options you have here for your API reference, you have different options to use. So the completions engine, if we click on this, tells you given a prompt, the model will return one or more predicted completions and can also return the probabilities of alternative tokens at each option. So it's not explaining this like you're five years old, it's actually completing it. So what we can say is, uh, the thing I love most about Shrek 2 the movie is, and then we can click send. This will send it off to the AI, and then it will respond with what the expected completion of this is, which of course will take a second. And we can see the thing I love most about Shrek 2, the movie is the sense of fun and joy that permeates every frame. If you're not laughing, you're crying. And if you're not crying, you're laughing. The plot is the familiar hero's journey formula we've seen from Star Wars to the Matrix, but with a twist to Shrek, Mike Myers and Fiona Cameron Diaz are now married and their lives are disrupted by the arrival of a new baby, the ogre triplets. And this isn't actually the, uh, the plot of Shrek 2. I believe this is the plot of maybe Shrek 3? Uh, or Shrek 4, I forget which one. Uh, but you get the idea, it's using the completion engine. Now there's a bunch of other options here and all you really have to do is tweak uh, the endpoint you're, com you're communicating with. So I just thought it'd be interesting to show this off. There's a whole bunch of different uh, features you can use here. And uh, yeah, hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully you can find some uses for this, uh, maybe generate some images or something in a future video. Uh, and hopefully I will see you in that future video. Thank you for watching.